Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Talking Automotive podcast, episode seven. We uh, do have Luke Fink. He's just on the way back from his racetrack because he was prepping his um, uh, his car for some some mods. I don't know if I can say what they are. Anyways, Man, so we're just going to talk. I love that. Just what? just just on my way back from my race. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> How good of me to say that. Hello, everyone. I know, right? Welcome Dreams. To Talking Automotive podcast. Episode um. So but yeah, yeah. Um, so Luke's coming. He's on his way. He's a few minutes away. Um, they did release the new Nissan Z and a BMW released an M4 and an M3. I don't know if anyone's seen them. But I don't... Oh, was the BMW like officially released or was it leaked? Uh, I think it's officially released. There's like right. cars guard and everything to it. So yeah, yeah they're, it's from the front. Well, they like, look anything. bad. I don't know if you've seen it. Go look it up right now. Actually, I'll just get it up on the screen if I can do that. Yeah, get up on the screen. I, I have, I've had a quick look at them. I remember seeing the front, and I was like, "Ooh, I don't know." I saw the back. I like the back, but the back looks awesome. But the, the it's ambitious. Oh, man. It's let me let me just do a give us a gaze. Let me have a and is this like actual like official production release or is this concept? Oh, I haven't read too much into it. Because um, concepts are always away. bad. Yeah, yeah, they're always heaps different. Um, yeah. It's like well, everyone yeah. was going off about like the Z, and then they're like, "Oh, remember the concept for the R35? That was <laughs> that was shocking." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's go like that. All right. So I assume everyone can see that now. Look at this. It's so yuck. No, I'll, I'll actually look it up. Whereabouts will it come up on the it's YouTube on a stream? Show? Yeah, someone says yeah, get a haircut. Oh, you stuff! Yeah, I'm not getting a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Josh. Hey, Ant. Um, yeah, look at this. Just disgusting. It's, actually, I don't know. I don't know what this grill is, man. This front grill. I, I swear, every year they grow. They've been getting bigger and they bigger. They get bigger eh? and bigger every year. They literally it's have. Bad. I don't... The back looks good. They do much, eh? The back, hey. Pretty much the same. Like, the I back's don't... awesome. I don't know. The front... I've seen worse. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a lot worse. Even the colour. Why did they pick that colour? I think I think the color just makes it worse, but yeah. <laughs> I don't think that I don't think it's the worst design in the world. I don't I think they could have done better with the front, but um, it's just their, their market's like that high end business guy. Like, that is their market, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's why it looks like that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Luke Fink sense. is uh, joining, well, so. Oh, it is too. But yeah, look, ah, it just looks so good. And then I think they stuffed up the rear, oh, the front. Sorry. Yo, Luke, how are Yo. we? Yo, we'll just uh, oh, yes. good, good, good. We'll just um, while we're waiting for you talking about the new M3 photos, the new M3, M4. I don't know if you've seen it. But I have not. Let me pull it up. It's not good. I want to hear your don't word get on too it. Excited, <laughs> what good. is it? Twenty twenty or twenty twenty one M three? Twenty one. Now I'm. I'm looking at a new photo of it. I'm like, well, oh, yeah, I retract my previous statements. Oh, the one, yeah, that those new big gay grills things. Yeah, yeah. Those do. You, Is that like, what we're talking about? Yeah. Yep, that one. Those things are disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Why did they yep. do that? No. <laughs> I don't it even know. Can you go? But I don't know what. Can you guys hear me all good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yep. fine, man. Yep. I do have a mic. That might make it a bit better, just in case. True, true, true. Alrighty. Sorry, boys. I've been. Uh, we got Matt Siri up here in Queensland because we're allowed out of the house. Ah, true. Oh, right. Yeah. You guys are allowed um, to just a little <laughs> brag there. Just rub it in. He, know, he knows <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm trying to have a mad flex and take four cars and prepping four cars for an event is like. That looks hard, work. hard as hey. Yeah, one's enough. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I can't even get one to the track. He got four. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. crazy. 
four to get to the car, get to the track, and my tow car got rear-ended and is off getting repaired. So I don't even know if I'll have my tow car back in time. Oh no! Have you got a? Have you got someone else to come in and uh, give you a lift? Give you a bit. Of yeah, time? I got plenty of the boys, so yeah. we'll work it out. But it's just uh, you know another another spanner just in the another, works. Yeah, just because of some uh, road rage, eh? A little bit. Yeah. Um. Well. Do we want to start the podcast off here, I suppose, now? And uh, do you want to give yourself a bit of an intro, Luke? Uh, let, let them yeah. know who you are and whatnot. And then uh, we'll get into it, start asking some questions and whatnot. Are we starting now? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We're live now on yeah. my channel, so yeah. All right. G'day, guys. I'm Luke Fink. Um, I guess professional drifter, vlogger, family man. I don't know. I get up to all kinds of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're a... I've and known. been around forever. Yeah. Well, wow. from what I can see, you've been around forever as well. Like, there's some old photos. When I was looking up some, like, info about you and stuff, there's some some photos, like, of you in Japan with Noriaro and, like, BMXing and all that stuff. It's it's crazy, man. Um, yeah, the BMX stuff is really old. But then, yeah, the Noriaro, that picture you seen would have been from 09. 09, yeah, right. Man, that's oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Uh, Back when you'd go to a Japanese Matsuri and you were like, uh, one of a handful of white guys yeah. where now it's just one more guy, white yeah. guys and a handful of japanese <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that would have been crazy back then hey hey like everyone's just... yeah, it was wild you basically just had to justify to everyone that you were australian and not american because the americans had such a bad rep there because it was like army brats sort of thing oh, and wow. they were basically being american and loud and obnoxious <laughs> and like we were sitting there from like two o'clock in the morning mm. until Ibisu opened, like reasonably far up the line. And the line was like a couple of Ks long sort of thing before Matsuri opened. And these like group of American dudes just bomb past everyone to the front gate, loud, what? obnoxious. It was like, and then from that point all weekend long, we're just like, we're not American. We're not American. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like we're an Aussie. Australians, yeah. we're not American. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To be honest, every time I've gone overseas, you have to specify that you're Australian, not American. Yeah. And everyone likes to do a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just... I've never really had that when I've been overseas, but... Yeah? Yeah. I don't know. Most of the time, think you're British. Hey? Most of the time, they think you're British. Yeah, true. Yeah, they do. Um, So, let's start with BMX, hey, because that's, like, where you first started, like, your professional, you know before drifting and all that stuff, how did you get into like uh, BMX and start like becoming a pro at BMX? Um, it was just right, just same as drifting. I, BMX was just an outlet and fun. Yeah. You know, um, I sort of tried to start racing. I realized that I was having more fun hitting the jumps than actually doing the racing. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just got more into freestyle and building jumps and then started then a street movement sort of started and started riding street and parks start skate parks started getting built so that makes me feel old like when i started riding there was like a handful of skate parks in melbourne and now melbourne's like covered in skate parks wow that's but, um, insane to think that actually sorry about the noise in the background nah, shut up fine. kids <laughs> 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 no nah, that happens it's all good um but, um, yeah, it was just it was just something I did for fun, and it just snowballed, and then you know started doing comps, and then the, I was sort of doing pretty well here, sort of winning most stuff I was entering um, in mostly BMX Park and then BMX Dirt, um, and then just spare of the moment, my mate who had a lot of confidence in my riding ability was like yeah let's go overseas sort of thing and i couldn't <laughs> afford it he's like no I'll, I'll get you tickets when you win money you can pay me back and i was like yeah that might not happen <laughs> sort of thing and wow. um what? yeah very first contest we w we went to was uh the world championships and i won so i that paid him back straight away is literally <laughs> insane <laughs> man That's good. i didn't know that yeah it was yeah, it was wild. It was really wild. And then we went over to, um, well, funny enough, you guys would have heard of Mark Webb. Yeah. He gets into his drifting yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, dude, I was competing with Webby in 2003. Really? And like, yeah, so I ended up going to the UK after the Worlds, which was in Portugal. And I went to an event called NAS, which is a fairly big, like, action sports event in the UK. And Webby was there, and he, he pretty much had the, the money already spent in his head 
and uh, <laughs> I turned up out of I turned up out of nowhere and uh, won won the street comp and what? so we our friendship sort of started off rocky because he was like fucking I should have won that comp and it's like yeah, yeah. I come <laughs> you just come out of nowhere like <laughs> off the boat yeah, like. <laughs> yeah. The boat. stupid Aussie guy just rocks up and no nah, that was cool yeah. like, no that's awesome one. Yeah. Won quite a bit of money that weekend. That was quite cool. Yeah, what was um, like, the prize pool for that back then? Because like 2000... Way better than drifting. Yeah. A million times better than drifting. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, unless you... To be fair, unless you do DCA, like Cash Kings or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, like the Worlds was like... Um, in Aussie dollars, was like 30 grand. Damn. Oh, yeah. Holy and shit. back in 2003, yeah. That's, like, yeah, um, that's so good. Because yeah. I, I, I won park, I came third in dirt and fifth in vert. Whoa. So I sort of won money in three disciplines. Yeah. Um, and then that uh, the NAS event after that was when the pound was like three like three Aussie dollars to a pound. <laughs> and I won like nine thousand pounds over there. So it was like <laughs> Oh what? Then I ended up in America and all the money evaporated into alcohol. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always, I suppose. Oh, that's fine. No, it was um BMX times are good times, man. Like, uh, very much I relate uh, drifting to BMX, and that's why so many BMX guys do it, you know? Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, I used to ride BMX and, like, skateboard as well with, like, a bunch of my mates. And, obviously, we all start falling off when you have to, like, start going to work, and, you know, everyone starts falling off into different friendship groups and all that. Well, that's the thing. It was um, Insane Drifters. Um, hi, uh Agus, Smurf, all of those boys from the original Insane Drifters all used to ride BMX, and they're the ones that actually introduced me to drifting. Yeah. Yeah, right. So that's sort of how I found drifting. Yes, yeah, like sort of like um, Adam LZ. He sort of fell off the BMX thing straight into cars as well. That's like, I think everyone sort of goes from like skating or BMXing to cars. Seems to be like a, Yeah. You know? There's like, there's so many good drifters that were like decent pretty deep either pro or really good bmx's like um just off the top of my head you've got pickering um christian pickering was bmxer like i rode with him a couple of times in adelaide back in the day um oh, there's a japanese uh what's his name there's a really good Japanese drifter, old, older one. I'm yeah. just trying to remember which one it was. But I was watching a like it was a Japanese documentary on him. <laughs> yeah. And it had him like styling over some dirt jumps. And I was like, oh, he's a fucking BMX. Yeah, that's that's sick. sick. You know what I mean? Like yeah. even the Japs were BMX. You know, even some of the Jap dudes were BMXs turned drifters. So yeah. yeah. What do you reckon? There's a lot. What do you reckon? Like the the connection is between the two. Like why mm. why do so many people move over from BMX to drifting? Mm, the freestyle aspect of it you know what i mean yeah. that you can express your, your style and your drifting sort of thing um and then probably on top of that most of us are stupid <laughs> <laughs> yeah the adrenaline sort of um, i don't know i think it's, it's definitely more of the it's the freestyle and style aspect of it the fact that you can yeah. have style and do it where like race car drivers like they sort of have to drive a certain way to be fast where yeah. drifting yeah, you I can know. definitely pick up who's driving a car by the way they drive you know so it's yeah. very style based i think yeah that makes sense yeah yeah that, yeah that does actually make sense it's, <laughs> i think um a lot of motocross people come over to drifting as well um i think i don't know like big names or anything because i'm not really into that thing but i think they would be the sort of same thing yeah they do they don't go quite as well i don't yeah. know it's I think this other thing that helps BMXs, which is probably somewhat helps with skaters as well, is like you've got to have flow. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. To, to ride BMX and skate. Like, especially, I guess, if you had a bowl skater, like a bowl skater would oh, definitely yeah. be adapt to yeah. drifting better mm. just because of line and flow. Yeah. You know, in your head, that stuff's got to make sense. You know what I mean? Like, for me, coming from BMX, like, I would, I would see a track and I would know where I need to go to make it work. Yeah. Like, it's just... Made it's, line, BMX yeah. wasn't natural, but drifting's felt natural to me. Oh, okay. So like, yeah. I just look at it and think I can, I, I know how I can do it. I don't, I just 
sort of know. <laughs> but BMX was very much like I had to like eat shit a million times before I'd land something. But yeah. then that's translated across to this where, you know, that stuff just makes sense. Yeah. You know, yeah, I can look sense. at it, it makes sense. I know where I have to go to make it work as if you would if you were carving a bowl or something like a yeah. complex bowl. You know a line you'd have to take to gather the speed from there to make it to there sort of thing. And yeah, that really translated across, across yeah. into drifting. Yeah. Yeah, right. I never really thought of it that way. But now, now that you've said it, it makes sense. <laughs> it's something that honestly is really a really common thing that I'll often tell people when someone's learning, like they're struggling with something on a course. It was like more often than not, they're thinking more about the corner they're on rather than the next corner. Yeah. And the problem is the way they're doing that corner is directly affecting their inability to do the next corner. They yeah. needed to sort of look past this corner and, not, and almost like sacrifice a little bit here to make the, the end better. Like, yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's a massive part. <laughs> Looking through the corner. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, there's people that don't often <laughs> think about, um, we've got a, Got some, a yes, kid some here at the moment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch my vlogs and seen Princey, that's Princey's kid. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> yo. Um, um, yeah. That that's where I just see that you know that yeah. stuff's really relative. You know, like I think the more flow you had as a rider or a skater, I think will definitely translate well across to drifting. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you yeah. on that one. I don't know if um Adam or James uh, used to ride skateboards or uh, BMX or anything. Uh, yeah, I can definitely I see never, the, Yeah, I was always around it, but like I never really yeah got that yeah. much into it. Yeah, um, I, was going I, was always, I was always the one filming and taking photos. So. <laughs> True. Um, yeah. that, that, that was my other. cop out. <laughs> that was my cop out. Yeah. I was just I doing to, like, downhill mountain on. biking. Uh, yeah. But then yeah, downhill sick. when you when you get a car, it's like, I'm not going to ride the bike anymore. <laughs> yeah, 100%. With age, get a cage. Yep, that's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you broke your ankle, didn't you? And that's how you fell out of like BMX? Like you fell out of that? Um, it didn't help, yeah. Because that took me out for fucking ages, man. Like, because it was ligaments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pins, plates, screws, yeah, like the lot. Big. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it did a fair bit of damage, sort of thing. Um, and that was when I was already into drift at that point anyway. Oh, okay, but it yeah. just, yeah, I just wasn't doing as much drifting because when I broke my ankle, so basically Drift Australia was the, the series at the time. Yeah. Um, that was, you know, the one, the big one, sort of thing. And you couldn't just enter it, you know what I mean? Like you had to be approved or earn a license or whatever. Like it had an actual system oh, in okay. place sort of thing. And all I'd ever done was street, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you guys are from Melbourne. You've heard of the West Meets. Like <laughs> yeah. I literally started the West Meets, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I was a street guy. So, you know, I literally went from street, like the only reason I knew Holford's is because I bought a car from them and they used to let me strip and fit my tires there to then jumping in a pro car. So oh, it was wow. sort of like I had to get um, people to vouch for the fact that I could drive sort of thing. Um, and luckily I did know some of the pro drivers at the time that could vouch for me and say, you know, he's good enough to be here sort of thing. Um, so we finally did get approved to be able to enter the event. And it was like three days after we got approved to drive at Eastern Creek round, I broke my leg. So it was wow. like, it, it, it was shitty. It was a shitty feeling because I sort of fucked everything up. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, <laughs> there's entry fees, there's travel plans. You know what I mean? You think about the fact that if you've got a team, you know what I mean? Like, and they're paying for everything yeah. and, and committing to something, like, they've already, they've already invested 10 grand into that weekend. Yeah. So you going and being a dickhead and breaking your ankle <laughs> is a real spanner in the works sort of thing. And, so the more I, you know, I ended up doing that first event that oh, I wow. eventually did was Tasmania and I was still on crutches and I had to get a dodgy roadie for my body ah. to just say that I was okay to drive <laughs> a car around a track. I'm not racing or anything. I just need something to say that I'm clear to drive around the, the drive. track. It's yeah. just for like a, a media day. Ah, okay. Yeah, right. 
straight down to Tassie, um, jumped in the race car, <laughs> and uh, yeah, entered my first drift straight and around. It, so. it didn't give you any troubles on that first event. No, I, I won. That's what? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, yeah, did not know I that. won and the only time it was really like scary is because they they did the whole grab you and throw you up in the oh, and yeah. I was like, if oh, you yeah. fuckers drop me, like I will die. Like do not <laughs> drop me. <laughs> yeah, right. But, Damn, dude. Did you um, break it. What happened? I fucked up a flip. <laughs> From a Classic. transition to transition flip. Yeah. And it was at, I was doing demos literally in like country Queensland. Yeah. And yeah, snapped it fairly bad and got the people that were running the demos that I was doing. Turns out they didn't have insurance or something along those lines. And I got literally left in a hospital uh, up in Rockhampton oh, on wow. my own, no money, nothing. Like it was proper, like pretty low point um, wow. in my life really, because it was just, I got, literally got left up there, no money, no nothing, at this hospital in Rockhampton. I was there for, like, I think like eight days or nine days before I could even get surgery because of the swelling. And then I was there for another, like, five days afterwards um, and ended up being another guy in hospital who was a BMX dude whose family ended up, like, paying for the TV to be turned on sort of thing. So I could at least watch TV and they brought yeah, in like dude. magazines and stuff and <laughs> man, pretty crazy. shitty fucking time. Shitty and time. Yeah, the, yeah. the lady that was running those events was like, I was trying to like, obviously get hold of her and sue her and whatever else. And she like collapsed the company and oh. yeah. Damn. So that was, yeah, that you was got really screwed over there. Right. <laughs> like Jesus. I, but it did it did take me out for a long time. It took yeah, yeah pretty much a year before I was like okay. Yeah, mm. that is a long time. Yeah, but it's a pretty um serious like an ankle accident if you're having like plates and screws in your ankle and stuff. So Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't ideal. But yeah, that was just again the reason that the BMX you know, fell by the wayside was not wanting to like fuck up opportunities with drifting for myself. Yeah, 100%. You know, I was enjoying it. You know, I'd, already, I'd done the BMX thing and still loved it, but it was like, yeah, you're falling away from it. Yeah. It wasn't as, you know, I enjoyed it from the fun point of view, but I guess it took a lot of wind out of my sails from a point of view of, um, you know, I hurt myself not doing something fun. You know what I mean? If I was out with the boys having a good time, <laughs> Like the day that yeah. I hurt myself, I didn't even want to ride, but I had to because we were being paid to do demos. Like, yeah, hundred percent. Like I wasn't feeling it that day. I shouldn't have, you know what I mean? Like I shouldn't have pushed it because I wasn't feeling it. And it, that made me a bit salty with yeah. BMX and yeah. it wasn't BMX's fault. It was just like it's just the... a shitty situation. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. So then, um, yeah. you, did you stick with, what is it? Halford motors for a while and stay on their team for a while? Yeah, so so Holford's it was interesting because a lot of people don't know the first car. Yeah. Like the first car was a Series One S fourteen. It was an X Works nine car. Um okay. that was some chick driver. I think she did like a sort of street legal sort of series. So it yep. was like uh T five one eight uh five one eight Z, like SR box, bolting cage sort of pretty yeah. basic car you know like but back then mind you like there was a awesome handful of guys then. making big power and mm -hmm. a, you know big power was 300 kilowatts <laughs> and then there was a couple of guys making 400 plus you yeah. know and 500 plus um so it, it you know the car was fast you know what i mean we actually one of the funnier things about that car is because we thought it would have some like sick japanese alignment we never got it aligned before we took it on track and after the event we went out we won it and stuff and we came back and we're like yeah we should really get it aligned and see where it's at it had seven degrees of toe in one side and eight degrees of toe out on the other so the back end oh, was like what drop <laughs> like sideways perfect like... man That's <laughs> We thought it was some like, we're like, we, we don't touch it because it's going to have like a sick Jap alignment, you know, like we didn't know shit. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. for Holford's, it was something completely new to, to buy a race car, um, you know, and, and then go racing sort of thing. So, yeah. And all I knew was street. So it was like, yeah, it was, it was 
pretty funny, but um, we campaigned that car for like a year or so, and then Dom ended up getting the second S14, which is the one most people know about, which is the dark green um, Holford S14. And that was like, came over from Japan as a street car. So it had AC and everything, but it was stroked SR um, with a dog, like a six speed HKS dog box um, and a few other bits and pieces. And then Dom just stripped it right down um, made it as light as possible and we went driving with that and I think yeah we we drove that from like that's the car we, we took that car to the states and everything went oh, to wow. the Red Bull World Championships in yeah. 08 yeah. Um, so I think that car was sort of 06 was the first year for that car and it was pretty like Maybe 07 was the first year with that car, and we didn't have a whole lot of luck. We had a lot of reliability issues. Ah, uh, okay. And the following year, we won the series. No, it wouldn't have been the following year. We came second in the series. Yeah. And then that's when we won the US tour. So it's first and second go to the US sort of thing. Um, we did that in 08. And then I drove the car through till about 2000. 13 i would say wow that's a long time so did, hey. yeah so even when i was over in um doing stuff in europe i was flying back to australia to do adgp it was so that was um that was pretty cool it was interesting yeah, and sick. and one of the funny things is i'm like i'm known for like sending it pretty hard obviously and there's plenty of people that see my 350z <laughs> for instance when it's yeah speed up which you know, car, but yeah. at the moment is actually a map it's pretty fucking mint again yeah it is yeah. but the entire time i drove that Holford motors s14 i broke one front bumper and a side skirt really? that's all i broke for all those years damn is that because you used to drive differently or no i used to send the shit out of it it's just the <laughs> car was built good it was just built True. right that's sick. yeah it was just a good good car Mm. Um, and driving wasn't quite as close back then. You're still getting a little bit of tire on door and stuff, but like my 350, for instance, is beat up because I chase people I shouldn't chase. You know what I mean? If a dude's <laughs> like sketching out in his AU, I'll be like, I'll do you oh, anyway. Do it anyway. If they're yeah. tapping their door, it's like it's on, boy, and then they get nervous and miss a gear, and it's like, yeah, oh, and then yeah. Fuck. You know what I mean? Like that's how 90% of 99.9% of my damage happens is like chasing people I shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. So um that's just i don't know i just love that story that's sick like and then so yeah. you, you joined another team after that didn't you or um no so we did i ended up you driving were... for low brain drifters in 2010 um i don't know you're old enough to remember 2010 oh i can't i don't i was in <laughs> drifting really back then. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so in 2010 kids <laughs> the okay. volcano that yeah. went off Right? You're listening, kids? Right, we're listening. Um, it's vol- in 2010, volcanoes went off over Europe and basically fucked Europe up, Europe up. And that's directly when I was flying to Europe to do one single event, which was in Manchester, England, in the low rain car. I ended up getting stuck in Spain because the flights had all been stopped. Everybody had already booked out all the train tickets, so you couldn't get a train. Everybody that couldn't get a train had booked out all the rental cars. So I was stuck in Spain on the Friday on the Friday morning. I was stuck in Spain with no planes to catch, no trains to catch, and no rental cars that I could get. I ended up jumping on the internet and putting up a Facebook status, and an old <laughs> BMX friend of mine turned out his uncle had a rental car company, and they had a car that had been crashed but not really that bad um he ended up coming to me at the airport jumped straight into that car and he's like just don't speed in spain once you're out of spain like fucking go for it (laughs) so i like jumped in that car drove as soon as we got to the french border i'm like fucking booked it all the way out to calais in france jumped on the ferry drove across mind you at this point i'd been awake for like 40 hours damn Get over to the UK, drive directly to Manchester, England. And I ended up there Saturday, well, Sunday morning at like one o'clock in the morning. I ended up there and all the qualifying was meant to be on Saturday. They let me qualify Sunday morning. I jumped in the car, did two practice laps, qualified first. 
<laughs> As you did. <laughs> um, Forty-eight hours away. Like, we come back in. We were doing really well in the comp, and then the turbo basically snapped clean off the manifold. So I had boost when I turned right, but no boost when I went left because the exhaust was basically swinging across and would hold the turbo <laughs> down. And then when it's, the exhaust swung the other way, it would open up, yeah. and I'd have no boost. Damn. But I, we ended up coming fourth in that comp, and the oh, guy that owns the team was like, hey, do you want to stay for the rest of the year? Um, and craziness oh, yeah. is James Dean was meant to drive the car for the rest of the year. So they booted James <laughs> and kept me for the rest of the year, and we did that whole year and won the series. Right. Um, Damn. So I was still going back and forth between Australia. So I was coming back to Australia driving the – Holford's car doing ADGP or Drift Australia or whatever. No, it was ADGP at that point. Yeah. And then spending a lot of time in Europe driving mostly the low brain car at events, but then I would like duck off to like Germany and drive for the GT radial team and do different things around Europe. So yeah, I did that for quite a few years, I guess. That's awesome. And then eventually came back to Australia and met my now wife. Yeah. And uh, we still were overseas, going back and forth, doing stuff, um, and then knocked her up. <laughs> <laughs> Classic story. Um, and it didn't actually, well, that didn't stop us, to be fair. We no. still, um, you know, my daughter's done over 30 countries, so yeah. it hasn't slowed us down at all. Yeah, that's um, good. That's good, though. But having the sun as well slowed us down a little bit. Yeah. Hey, um, <laughs> um, so you didn't actually ever get to j uh, drive with James Dean at all, or is it? Yeah, we were teammates. Yeah, so you were teammates. Yeah. Yeah. Um, last time I what was it the last year I drove the low rank car when the low rank car was V8 because it was SR the first time I went over. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So about yeah, was it three years ago? Oh, five years ago was the last time. Um, I did an IDC round and got like a fourth there. And then it's when I was, when I did that whole thing where I stirred up all the Irish, which too many people took to heart and didn't realize it was just a piss take. Like just because you know, the Irish are passionate. Yeah. So it's like, all it takes is a little like poke. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> just one uh, you, you guys suck. And you know what I mean? Like it, it riled them up and turned into a big, like, you know, thing. Um, it was sort of me versus the Irish and hey! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we did that and I was like, you know, the Irish judges fucking, which they were like, you know what I mean? IDC had every big pro from every other country come there and not do any good. And it was like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like everybody else around the world is shit. Like yeah. the judging was fairly average. Uh, um, and I said, once we get, I'll get James outside of Ireland and I'll fucking destroy him sort of thing. Like still like taking the piss, but I knew a decent enough driver. I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I've driven with James enough and like the low brain car was only a 450 wheel car and like all the IDC guys are like 600 plus. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that first round of drift all stars in the UK. And then I knocked him out in the top four. Damn. I was like, it was like, oh, up the Irish. See when we get <laughs> if we get outside of Irish judging, I'll whoop you. Yeah. And it sort of like it played into the whole thing. It was so cool. That's like awesome. You know, for people that took it to heart and took it the wrong way, they took it the wrong way. Like whatever, you can't help that. For the people that like saw that it was good fun, you know what I mean? Like understood it was just good fun. So yeah. But yeah, so we did that, and then I did like Jim Carner Grid, which is like the Ken Block Jim yeah, Carner. Yeah, so I think it's I sort of that. Yeah. racing style Jim Carner stuff. We did some of that and won the UK and European series with the low brain car as well. Um, yeah, and then I've been doing, I did stuff with that B10 BMW um, in the the desert region, uh, Abu Dhabi and um, I didn't say that. Bahrain and yeah. all that parts of the world. Yeah. Have you ever seen an M3 BMW that sounds like an F1 car getting drifted? No, I have not actually. Sounds yeah. good. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, if, you haven't heard, if you haven't heard it, you need to hear it. All it's right. pretty sick. <laughs> so you've just um, literally been everywhere, like drifting and or, and doing BMX, obviously. It's sick. Yeah, we did. I did quite a bit with BMX. Like I didn't 
have a winter for sort of like it's about six years i didn't <laughs> see a winter yeah um and then we pretty much had been i pretty much had been doing the same thing with drifting but there was like that few years in between where there wasn't a lot of overseas stuff yeah. um but then obviously as the the, the drifting you know 2010 financial crisis not funny yeah it's a financial crisis in 2010 yeah. as well yeah that sort of killed ADGP and that's why I started looking overseas for like to, yeah, okay. to drive. Yeah. And then that sort of snowballed because I did pretty, pretty well out of the box sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and I think it helped that whole story of being stuck in Spain and all that, like it had a good build up as well. You know what I mean? Like this fucking Aussie guy and for Europeans, yeah. Like driving from Spain to Manchester, England, they're just like, <laughs> why, <laughs> no, no, no. And why would why you would even you do think that? about doing that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't even like, like now. in a, in a, just a straight drive, you know, and it's unheard of <laughs> to do something that stupid sort of thing. But I was, de- I'd already gone that far. I was very determined. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You got to finish. Um, it so yeah, it's, it's, it's been a, been a wild ride. <laughs> Wait, when you're uh, uh, hand, like, competing around the world and stuff, do you get like super nervous or you just chill like at your... <laughs> no, I think the only time you get nervous is if you're sitting on a start line and waiting forever. Like there's times like that, but I'm pretty, I don't know. I'll just muck around and stuff, <laughs> try and keep myself entertained. It's because the thing, if you just sit there and let stuff go through your head, that's when, you know, when it's like a really prolonged time you're sitting on the start line. Um, Actually, funny, on that story, you know how I said I went to Manchester and I drove, like, oh, I think it ended up being nearly 50 hours, and that night I only slept for a few minutes. Oh, not a few minutes, for a few hours. Mm. Um, I, they had a monster truck demo in the top eight, and we were waiting to go out, like, on the start. Like, I was, sorry, there's two cars on the start line for their battle, and then we were the next battle. The car was sitting there <laughs> idling, like, Cam Dessar idling, this monster truck's doing things, the monster truck breaks down, and we're just sitting there, and fuck, oh. I dozed off, man. Really? I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> asleep in a running race car, and, like, I guess the car ended up getting moved or something, and they came over and, like, had to wake me up. I was sort of like, yeah, mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, 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 let's go. Yeah, we're good to go. Just good to go. Mate. Good as go, just a bit tired, oh, mate. Yeah, just having a nap, trying yeah. to be JDM, you know? Yeah. Could you imagine, uh, like, taking a camera back then and, like, vlogging that whole thing? Oh, imagine dude. that, man. Imagine the videos and, like, the stories you could have told. Yeah, dude. They, there's so much stuff that would have been fantastic to, you know, to show. And, and I wish I had more footage and things like that of the past to be able to, like, put some of these stories together because yeah. there are some, you know, some really cool stories and there's, like, some shitty stories and it's just, like, yeah, you know, like it's one of the biggest things about going and driving for other people, you know, like most, like I, I don't realize, like I didn't realize necessarily at the time how lucky I was with the Holford Motors team. Like we were a very low budget team, but the guys were very committed. They did everything they could to make sure like I could do a good job. And then like the low brain team on the other hand were fucking hopeless. You know what I mean? Like, trying to explain to the dude like just buy all of the one kind of tire so i know what the car is going to do if i throw your car at a wall at full speed you know what i mean like you need to have that trust you know what i mean and he'd buy like a couple of this tire a couple of that tire and it's like you don't have time to test them yeah 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 so it's like you go from one brand to another and you're sending it straight at a wall like shit's gonna happen yeah for Mm. sure and yeah Yeah. just I guess silly there's been there was some stupid things like that that like there was one time when I crashed the car well I didn't crash I had the car was cutting out really badly and I told the dude I'm you guys have got S13s you know the S13 fuel flaps and they break in the tank and you get really bad fuel surge <laughs> mm, right yeah, yeah that's what the car was doing <laughs> dude was like it's an electrical problem it's an electrical problem we sorted it out I'm like can you just top tank up to the till it's full just to make yep. sure He's like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Sends me out for our only practice we have at this event. I go out, I tell one of the Driftworks drivers, Bon Bon, who is going to tandem with me, I'm like, just be aware that on the left hand as the car cuts, just, it might, it might, it might not. He's like, yeah, cool, no worries. 
So we go out, not realizing that um, Phil Morrison, Driftworks guy, has like bombed it behind us. But he's like six car, like death gap, you know what I mean? Like the six car sort of gap. Yeah. So you know, if something bad happens, he's ultimately just gonna go, <laughs> you know, not a nice like dun dun dun, yeah. like a big fucking bang. Sure enough, last corner, car cuts, straightens, and it fucking comes back on hard and I have like a half spin bonbon bon stops and then we just literally hear 2J limiter <laughs> yeah wipes completely wipes us both out damn dude the dude like like we end up drive I end up being able to drive the car back into the pits we get in there the dude like comes up holds onto the door and stuff and he's like having a go at me and I'm like let like it's not, this was not my fucking fault. I told you about the fucking fuel system right there. And I'm trying to open the door because I'm like, I'm going to fucking wipe you out, dude. Like, yeah. I'm like, fuck this. Packing all my shit and going. And he's like, oh, no, no, please stay. You know, we'll work it out. Rah, rah, and Damn, he doesn't seem like a team player oh, at shit. all. Uh, it was just, just, just some things like that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're behind the scenes that you don't really hear and see about. But um, that was actually the first event in the UK we won. So... <laughs> That wow. was kind of cool. Yeah, that's we ended up winning that event, but yeah. um, it was like, yeah, I was ready to fully quit at that point, but um, just because it's not worth it, you know what I mean? If someone's going to be a dick to you like that, you don't really it's want that shit. It's not worth the so, having it on your shoulders. Yeah, sure. yeah, exactly. And the problem is, is like most people don't realize with with you know doing a driving for someone that it's their car. Yeah. You know, and I didn't build it. The car's a piece of shit. Most people are like, oh, Luke, your car was fucking up. Rah, rah. It's like, I didn't build the fucking thing. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I was just there to drive it. If the yeah. car works, cool. If it doesn't, it kind of makes me look stupid. Um, yeah. So that side of it is, you know, something that people don't know about. And I guess it would have been sick, you know, through that time to be able to, like, document that. Yeah, so, yeah. I agree. That's, That's the coolest thing about YouTube and what we're all doing. Like, we're just documenting everything that we're yeah, all that, the memories and yeah it's sick so yeah. even more recently when i was driving the the v10 beamer like that it was a um abu dhabi team and the dude that owns the shop is like a forget he's it's like a some sort of physics guy professor and basically <laughs> he just opened up a workshop because it's like just because yeah. fun yeah you know what i mean like it's not a business it was just fun for him to open up a workshop and blah blah and he, those guys were like like he sh he literally had the car flown from Abu Dhabi out to Malaysia and then couldn't even fucking turn up until like practice had already started and supposedly the car was like ready to go and like I got there at fucking seven in the morning <laughs> like ended up having to wrench on the car all morning like recentering the rack and doing all kinds oh, wow. of work to the car but i couldn't actually turn the car on until they got there because they had the key oh. and you know you imagine you're sitting there in another country you haven't even seen your team yet the car's <laughs> there like you've just using everybody else's in the pits tools um you know jacking this car getting as much of it sorted out as you can to then like they eventually rock up and oh you know sorry man it's like <laughs> God damn, you like spent <laughs> like 15 grand flying the car here. Do you think yeah, you'd, you'd be there, man? Be like... here on time and, um, <laughs> you know, things like that would have been like cool to document because, from a point of view, like <laughs> it kind of would have been good and bad because it, it would have made them look bad because, you know, they're the things you just don't know about, I guess. You know, that is very much behind the scenes yeah. things that can happen, yeah. you know? Mm hmm. And that's what everyone wants to see. Behind the <laughs> oh man, like clickbaity thumbnail. You imagine it. My fucking <laughs> team didn't turn up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> foreign yeah. country where no one really speaks English and I got no team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, but I'll it would definitely be an interesting levels. watch. Yeah. Oh, it would be an interesting watch. There'd definitely be a lot of. Uh, I need to learn how to use like the bleeper thing. <laughs> <That's really cool>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, uh, yeah, I would have been stressing so much if that was me. I would have been like, "What do I do?" Like, you know. Oh, uh, it's hard because, like, as much as it was like frustrating from a point of view of potentially making you look shit, because again, people thought it was my car. Yeah. Um. 
at the same time was getting paid pretty well to drive that car yeah so it was all flights and accommodation plus like a pretty yeah, decent a good gig um bit of cash as well so i was sort of like you know whatever if you don't turn up the car doesn't work like whatever i'll have a good time while i'm here yeah um but then you know you get that little bit of a competitive side of you that's like no nah, i'd like come all this way i sort of want to do well so so how did, you just sort of roll with the punches if it works out it works out if it doesn't it doesn't yeah and how'd you go with that like series did you did it end up being like a, a fun series and like um i come second behind sato okay yeah that's pretty so good. that's not too bad that's pretty yeah. good <laughs> yeah yeah and that was um affected by the car there was two rounds in japan and they didn't ship the v10 beamer out there because there was no way to make it quiet enough to drive at um nico circuit yeah because the, the v10 was just crazy loud and it wouldn't have passed in sound regs and they didn't want to send it all that way and i actually had a local car lined up and that okay. fell through so i completely uh, missed the nico uh, round yeah. and then i ended up trying to do the abyssu abyssu round in a friend's missile 90 which was stock turbos and stuff <laughs> and it just didn't that just wouldn't it, it, yeah. yeah minami stock turbos 265 <laughs> achille one two threes and i was just like kicking the shit out of it yeah but i ended up getting taken out by a chick from new zealand uh oh, wow. jody donovan well she was hmm. just so slow i couldn't actually drift behind her it sounds bad <laughs> it was like i i you know what I mean? Like I had no power, so I needed to go fast. Yeah, you know, yeah. I needed to every jump, every thing over the jump at a bit. So I was four wheels off because I had. If I didn't hit it completely yeah, yeah. flat, That's a you know what I mean? I wasn't going to make it. Yeah, yeah. So I got sort of stuck in a situation where I was behind her. And she was going slow, and I was like, rrr, rrr. like I didn't, I didn't have enough speed to get sideways. <laughs> um, Damn. So That's that was good. like whatever, but those those lost points didn't help. Yeah. Um, but still, second, you know what I mean. Like it's pretty awesome though. Behind Sato, cool as story. Yeah, <laughs> not complaining. Yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. even imagine competing against him. Like it's just insane. <laughs> yeah, he's really competitive. He's a good dude, but he's very competitive. Like extremely competitive. Yeah. So when he gets stuck in my situation of getting a shitty car, this is how many people are watching this uh the 20 it just went from 25 down to 20 but yeah so okay cool yeah not that many people should know sato will straight blow up a car if it's not good really? like he will go out and blow it up to the he'll blow it to the fucking moon yeah to just so he doesn't look like a dickhead uh, okay he'll blow it up and go grab beers <laughs> <laughs> that's the way i suppose <laughs> yeah well he doesn't want to get made to look like a dickhead you know in a car that's average you know what yeah. i mean like i mean to an extent that's fair enough because like half of your your drifting is the, having a the car that, that works yeah and works yeah. well and if you're known for being a sick driver and you can't be a sick driver because the car sucks like it, it, yeah it's frustrating yeah. especially when it's not your car like you you haven't built it yeah but you everybody you watching you know yeah, everyone even... thinks it's your car Man, the amount of times I'll get like a message about, you know, what I did with my S14 or what I did with my low brain car or what I did with my V10 BMW. It's like, none of those cars are mine, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just part of the team. like. Yeah. I was a gun for hire. Yeah, basically. yeah pretty much. <laughs> Take you yeah. out to the shooting range and away you go. <laughs> That's it. Sometimes I just get given shitty guns. Yeah. I suppose everyone <laughs> you know? gets in that boat sometimes, so yeah um do you, oh, yeah, that's a bit of that let's um i want to talk about drift week and um yeah i had a question like let's talk about drift week like what what is drift like actually like is it like awesome fun or is it just a lot of like i don't a know driving. No. Well, yeah a lot of driving and <laughs> from an aussie point of view i didn't think it was the driving side of it was bad i guess like i did it with my wife and kids yeah. like it can't yeah. be that bad true right? yeah um to be fair, I'm lucky. I have a fantastic wife and great kids. Like that makes it a bit easier. Yeah. Um, but we did like, we did like, I think 12,000 Ks before we even went to Drift Week yeah. in that car. Yeah. So like once I got in Drift Week, it was like, oh, what, we're only doing seven hours tomorrow? Like, easy. Yeah. So <laughs> um, it wasn't so bad. And by that point, I'd sort of got all the problems out of the car anyway. Yeah. Um, 
so like Drift Week itself was pretty chill from that point of view. Um, I think the hardest thing was because we're sort of like drifting, traveling, drifting, traveling, drifting, traveling is as well as a lot of us being YouTubers. The, you know what I mean? Like you'll uh, yeah. be in situations where you're, <laughs> you, not you drift all day. You get back, you have a shower, and then a bunch of us are editing. Yeah. And then finally we'll be like, no, we still want to get on it. So you know, we start drinking and go out, and, <laughs> yeah. and the next day you're like, fuck. Like, sounds. Oh, let's nah. do it again. Yeah. That's that's the Aussie way, though. If you don't get <laughs> yeah. on the night before someone, something's wrong. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was actually wondering, like, do you reckon we could do that? in australia that kind of um thing like obviously our tracks are all spread out pretty far um not really i've got it planned yeah i've got one planned and all the drift weight most of the drift weight guys are pretty keen to come out here okay because i so i thought about it while you guys were doing it i was like man you should do it like it'd be awesome to plan something like that obviously i don't have like Wait, the... so you you've got to remember queensland so you've got queensland raceway half an hour down the road is archie yeah Four hours down the road is Rally. Yeah. Then it's about six or seven hours from there down to, um, well, you can go to Sydney Motorsport Park and even just the peanut, which would still be cool with the right people. Um, you would hope that, um, uh, what's it called? The one that got stopped drifting there now, all of a sudden. Uh, I don't know. Not sure. Um, um, do not Pheasant Wood. But, oh, there's Pheasant Pheasant Wood, yeah. just south of Sydney. Yeah, you'd hope that opens um, back up. Like, yep. But if not that, you've still got Wakefield Park. True, Wakefield's supposed to be awesome, hey? So you think Drift, Drift Week, even the Drift Week coming up in November, it's still only five tracks. Yeah. Wow, yeah. So but five tracks with driving, with a day of driving in between sort of thing. It like. Yeah. It, it, that's that pretty solid, work, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, Queensland's super simple. It's only a four and a half, five hour drive down to rally. Yeah. Um, and then from rally, you know, the six or so hours you go via Sydney, have a good time in Sydney then down to like Wakefield or Pheasant Wood or both. Yeah. It'd, it'd be a pretty solid, solid week and a half of like having a sick time. Yeah, that would so yeah, work, it's definitely but... in the works. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I've, I've been actually quite recently toying with the idea of doing the exact same thing, but four driving. <laughs> So yep. like a four B week, but like adding in the extra element of everyone has to bring camping equipment. Like you have to camp everywhere. So yeah, so it's like any other wheeling trip. Are you what you're yeah. gonna more yeah. like hit like more notable spots? Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be actually f freaking awesome. Would you go like full drive park to full drive park, or would you be more nah, like tracks? So tracks. Not, yeah, definitely. Like just well, maybe you can throw in like a full drive park here and there, but um yeah just like hit up the big name tracks like the, the around my area and then like obviously do the driving days and driving out to other other places yeah. so where are you um, from again melbourne uh so i'm in victoria in the Yarra oh Valley so area. you could yeah, yeah you could quite easily obviously start off in the high country then go up and do like wadigans and stuff in sydney then up to coughs and then then you've got uh like little and big red out at um just north of Brisbane here and stuff. Like you definitely do. Yeah, you could easily get a pretty rad trip like that. That'd be cool. I'm yeah. Doing on that, having a squad of four by fours yeah. just like cruising down the road and then hitting spots. Yeah, and like you have to, because obviously there's a lot of legal things with the cars. Like, yeah. it's it's up to you Send whether it. or not especially down here in victoria <laughs> um it to be fair mo most of the retarded forbies you see are from vic yeah. like yeah not a lot of like a lot of the winch trucks like i've been out in vic wheeling back when i had my gq shorty and like everything i went out with was like 37s with big twin motor winches and stuff like yeah. I was like, okay, okay, I'm definitely going to need to send it here because I was only on 33s in a shorty. Damn. Um, yeah, when do you reckon that drift week will happen in Australia? COVID, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So, COVID. 2030. <laughs> yeah. There's a spanner in the works for everything. 
that's the big killer for me is like this this drift week coming up like i'm still part of the the group and everything and all the boys chatting about it i'm like oh man you guys. Be like, hey because cletus is coming on this one and oh, it, it's a no. bigger crew in general yeah. um and it's literally i think the second last event is going to be at the freedom factory and dude it's just like it's just <laughs> like fuck. you know it's so frustrating the the you know the realism that we can't go like it's in mm. first weekend in november it starts yeah. so it's like it's it's a pretty much an impossibility um the more i looked into it I even found out a motorbike friend was going over there racing so he got he's allowed to leave australia like he's been allowed to leave he has to quarantine when he comes back he doesn't have to quarantine on the way over there but the only way he can guarantee he's going to get there and get home is he has to fly business class there and the only way he can guarantee getting home is first class on the way back damn so it's like what? 14 Jeff. grand in flights i think he paid yeah so, oh, drift week's cool but not yeah. that yeah dude uh because yeah. you've had that plan oh, like since the last drift week hey like well, it's always gonna happen the, the idea was more to do a drift week next year but then lz sort of put the the thought into Aaron's head about doing it this year. And then that sort of snowballed and um, yeah, so they're doing one this year, but I think they're still planning to do one um, like sort of February next year. So I guess if that goes ahead, being depending on how this one goes, there could be one as soon as February next year. Yeah. Hopefully we can leave the freaking country. You oh, know, like, so, man. A few fucking Victorians just chill the fuck out. Mate, I just hey, want to like... go five days away from my house. That's all I want to do. <laughs> Stay the <Wait>. fuck home. <laughs> we wear our masks and stuff. It's all good. We had like 28 cases today, which is... We're getting there. We just have to... Uh, no, no, we had 15 game. today. Oh, 15. 15. Yeah, yeah 15. Oh, masks, boys. She'll be right. Yeah, get your <laughs> Luke Fink shibby masks and, you know, get them, get them wearing. <laughs> yeah. I haven't been able to go four-wheel driving since March. It's yeah. been... It sucks. Yeah, look, I went to Land Cruiser Mountain Park the other weekend. It was mm. good. And you know, <laughs> you know what's even worse? We can't go drifting. I talk about this like every week on the podcast because James and I see you, like all you guys drifting out there, like Zach and all that. Mike Lake like, goes drifting on Friday. Time, most of the time you guys can't go drifting anyway, so. Yeah, true. <laughs> I don't see you don't have anything anyway. But compared Mike, to like middle up of here, like stage four lockdown, retired. Mike just goes, Oh yeah, business business drifting. Yeah, I see you in the chat, <laughs> yeah. Mike. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Salty. um, yeah, man, Queensland's mental. Hey, like I didn't get That's a chance awesome. to say hi to you, James, on Friday night, but I saw you out there. I saw you driving in with the rear bar dragging. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> all your yeah, I was the only one driving that night. It was like the first lap, and the rear bar came off. Oh no! Oh, there you go. Yeah, I was there with my boy Mitch with the V8 Hilux thing. Doing some filming and groaning around and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Don't bend over too much, honey. I see you on the camera. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me banned off YouTube. <laughs> um, yeah, the events, hey, like you can't do them all. It's crazy. Oh, Queensland, no. Nah, fuck yeah. me, man. Like, dude, we, you know, it's crazy. Like, we get guys, guys get good up here fast. Like, yeah. we've got one dude in an AU that comes to our track with like these blue stripes down the side. He's like, he doesn't have a lot of money, but the dude comes to every single event we have on, and he's been drifting for about three months, and the dude kills it now. Yeah, mm. like straight Same up, time. like he's drifted twice a week for three months. Yeah, that's yeah. like awesome. the dude's just like out of control already. I like wish... it, it's. Yeah, I wish we could do that down yeah. here in Melbourne. Yeah, I wish it was yeah. just so much like more chill down here. It's yeah. just not. Well, it's definitely chill. You guys are wearing hoodies and stuff like that. I'm just... <laughs> I'm seeing you inside yeah, my outfit. Yeah, you guys are in t-shirts and we're like r rugged up. Dude, I'm sweating. It's, it's cold down here at the moment. Look at the glimmer off James's head. He's sweating as well. I can't have the like, no. I've got the heater on cranked and I'm like... Uh, oh, dude, I we pretty much need to put air... Yeah, it's the same thing. I haven't turned the fan on because it'll fuck up the noise. But uh, as yeah. soon as I'm finished with you guys, the fan's gone. Yeah, right? for sure, for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's just crazy how it's so different between everything but um yeah at least we have um keep it rate and vic drift doing events which means there's like at least two a month now you know yeah it's, it's, just, it's definitely got better down there for sure it it's just yeah. like 
I don't envy them. Like I, I used to do stuff, you know, I was around in Vic obviously when Vic Drift pretty much started and all of that sort of stuff. And like the tracks are so fucking difficult to deal with yeah. in Victoria. Like yeah. Winton, the guys that run Winton are fucking dickheads. Colder. The guys that run Colder <laughs> are complete fuckheads. Yeah. Like that Bob Jane or yeah, it's his whatever son. The fuck. It's his son, yeah. They are just the biggest pieces of shit to deal with. Like yeah. it's so difficult. Yeah, it's like I don't envy you know, that's why I was gonna be working with Keep It Read to do the the collab DCA Keep It Read event we were gonna do this year. Um, because like I'm like, you know what, Jason, you you do that side of it and I'll <laughs> I'll bring international drivers in and we'll set up it'll be good because I just don't want to fucking yeah, the reason I haven't brought it. DCA back to Victoria is because I just don't want to deal with those fucking <laughs> idiots. They're just scumbags. Yeah. They're so difficult to deal with. I think and they are just like scum. Like they will like, you know, and they see you're having a good event, and making good money. They'll be like, yeah, how can we like suck more fuck money these out guys and get that bit more money out of them? And yeah. oh, man, they just make it shit sucks. up. And then you see your bill, and you're like, what the fuck is all this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, only solution I see is us just making a new yeah, track, crowdfunding a track or something like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah look when i was in melbourne there's a rally school out in um out the back of werribee yeah and the dude was pretty down for it and stuff but he just didn't want to cash out and, and put the asphalt down but man if it had happened it would have gone berserk yeah for sure mm. uh, like an archie in melbourne uh, like just say perfect. archie in melbourne with a burnout pad as well mm -hmm. will you jesus christ it would be out of control yeah uh yeah it would just go nuts yeah Cheap and sessions. honest to god it yeah. in melbourne it would literally be printing money oh it would be you would be super busy all the time there'd be crowds yeah. there like melbourne's i think in queensland because we've got so many events like you still get good numbers at events but like because yeah. nothing happens in melbourne like not, well, when there not is nothing event. but not as much happens and i think people in more melbourne are a little bit more willing to like travel and go to see something if it is on yeah so you generally you, you know you'd get crazy crowds and stuff and oh can you imagine you know oh, another one that you young good. fellas would be too young for is there was a thing in uh Brody, which was near the ford factory that was called drag tag oh what? and that was like near the ford factory and it was a indoor sim place and they actually had a burnout pad out the back and the place was like that's... out of control busy but it got shut down because people were being fuckheads out the front and uh, doing burnouts out the front as well classic. and yeah. basically the place got shut down yeah always like it's always the people they that ruined just, it yeah every time something good happens someone has to go do a burnout the front and just ruin it like yeah that's why we're <laughs> complete pricks at archie like if someone fucking does a skid or something out the front like we'll chase them we'll grab their plates like yeah Ban them, that's like, fair enough because like that's what ruins it all it's ruining it's a business 100 yeah. percent. yeah well same thing with wheeling you got people like dumping rubbish and shit out on tracks it's like pretty much the same thing yeah you know in a different sense or you get that shit in wheeling as well where people go out and just get mud burnout oh. pits and stuff like that it's like you're just yeah. wrecking shit yeah like we're yeah. we're pretty selective with people that we go out with because some people will just like i <sighs> It's a hard one with four-wheel driving because sometimes, like, it is required and sometimes it's just excessive. So it's, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's a fine line with four-wheel driving, but yeah, sometimes you just get dickheads that just. Ruin I'm it. also you'd be on a track and then you'll come across a wide area and you people have just been ripping hoops. Oh, and, and, yeah, nah, don't like that know. at all. There's always these posts up in like the high country of campgrounds just tore up. And yeah, exactly yeah so that's getting hammered and jumping in their four b's and acting like morons yeah 100 percent. actually when i went to land cruiser mountain park when i was there just near our camp we just heard like two o'clock in the morning this v8 hilux uh <laughs> land cruiser just getting ripped on and then all of a sudden you hear him lose it and then you hear him blow out two tires and stuff and it was probably 50 <laughs> feet from our camp oh yeah a what? dude had a massive lose like wiped out a fence and shit at the full drive path and then like legged it away um but you could pretty much follow the oil trail to uh where he was camped <laughs> but it was like that yeah that's the sort of stuff where it could easily have gone real bad you know what i mean like yeah he's only 50 feet from us you know we're camped with little kids and yeah. stuff it was like it could have easily gone bad yeah unfortunately 
it, it happens you know across everything you know you got football and all that sort of stuff you've got yeah. dickheads there's dickheads in everything there's, you know yeah yeah so in the human race cars seem to uh, get picked <laughs> on a bit more i suppose oh, they're mad. yeah I don't think so. Like, I think it's more just like because it's something we're passionate about. I guess, like, because you yeah. always see footballers in the news yeah. for being dickheads, you know? Yeah, I suppose so. They went and beat up someone, they went and did something, they yeah. were drug driving and all that sort of stuff. So, it definitely, I think it's universal. It just, we notice it more because it hits home with us, you know? It's like when you get a car and you're like, oh, this is a rare car. And then all of a sudden you've got one and you're like, they're fucking everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're looking for your dream. Like, S13. literally, you're like, no, nah, I barely see any in this color. Then all of a sudden, you're like, there. Yeah. Like, that fuck? always happens, yeah. hey? Yeah. That's that 100%, 100%. Ha- happened with my Trubi. I was like, man, I've seen, like, three Trubies in Melbourne, and then I fucking buy it. And I literally, I'm on drive <laughs> home from buying it, I pass three Trubies in the game. <laughs> yeah, and you're all like, <laughs> 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 You're like, I'm going to be real unique and get a yeah. troopy. <laughs> yeah, no one for all drives next, troopers, th- next thing you know, you're on some troopy group thing and they're having a meet and there's like 200 cars <laughs> yeah. there and you're like, fuck, and they're all the same colour. <laughs> they're all white. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Uh, every time I see a white troopy, I'm like, oh, is it at? No, it's not at. Damn it. Like, <laughs> no, you'd, you'd recognise my one. Yeah, I do now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's funny. Um, yeah, he's he's as one of a hundred with an AR bull bar and 35. <laughs> <laughs> does not have an AR bull bar and doesn't even have 35s. Oh, but it's free. Need to get 35s. <laughs> yeah, I do need to get 35s. But you know, uh, yeah, they would, they yeah, would, yeah. You'd no doubt there'd be ones that are nearly the same. Like, yeah. yeah. Even with my Raptor, I'm like looking at stuff to do to it, and I was like, because it's not. There's heaps of them around, but there's not many companies making stuff for them. Yeah, so so everyone like, does the same. Your car's pretty much going to look the same as someone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's the same with that. Like S13s and stuff, you all get the similar body kits and do all the same like things and get massive wheels or you know or you stance it and you know. But they all. I mean, all the guys that are doing the uh, the uh, internet breaking builds that are just being done like fifty times before. Yeah, Don't worry, I much. see. A, I see a lot of that working at Boss <laughs> yeah. Aluminium. It's like, yeah, it's another seventy nine doing a dual cab. A dual cab so, double. <laughs> Oh, yeah. you've coiled, you've coiled the rear. Oh, oh, yeah. You're the only one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're the only one today. Yeah. <laughs> this hour. Yeah, like, it's it's funny. I just think I I know everyone stopped saying game changing build now, but um, there's still Six still people. Like. You just got to admit that like everything's probably been done. You just doesn't you mean just you can't make it do your it own though. instead of trying to yeah. make it make it different. Yeah. Like just make it your own. Yeah. 100 percent. yeah it's just way better but then like you can do something i've seen a lot of very unique four-wheel drives though and like they're just crazy stuff but then when you lot thing with four-wheel driving is that like, lots of people it's their only car so you go like <laughs> man you gotta drive that to work like, that doesn't make any sense yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you see dudes with crazy touring setups and it's like, yeah, hauling around an extra ton of shit and that's your day. Just yeah. to get to work. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Take the rooftop up, mate. You're not going to need it at work. <laughs> yeah. But but the rooftop's too high for them to get to. So it's like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, someone in chat was it's asking funny. if you have wheels from RTR coming. Or when are they coming? So funny you say that um vaughn is gonna get me some but it literally just has to wait until this covid stuff Uh, gets over and done with but vaughn hit me up ages ago about getting me some out um and there was none in new zealand because he was just going to get them sent out from new zealand there's no no rtr dealer in australia so they have to come from the states and basically they're just like chill until after yeah the shipping is cooked at the moment (sighs) yeah but yes, the plan with it is to have some of the RTR wheels, and I was awesome. pretty keen to get some sent out. So yeah, yeah, man, it's it's cool to have those sort of connections, I suppose. Absolutely, yeah. Vaughn's good dude. I've known him since been friends with him since two thousand eight. Yeah, yeah, been good mates with him since two thousand eight. Gone out to his house a few few times stayed yeah. there and rallied uh in his backyard and all kinds of yeah 
fun shit. It was so fun. Yeah, yeah, we we went to bloody. It was in the UK. We ended up meeting up with, uh, catching up with him at Silverstone circuit and there was like some gt racing and there was like an uh speed hunters or e- ea games m4 that was getting raced there or a z4 oh yeah like gt car yeah we ended up going out for dinner and dude i was like properly broke at the time they took me out for dinner to this place and it was fucking it's steak with gold on it <laughs> what <laughs> and i was like this is so fucking ignorant like i need i like, I understand I'm not paying you guys an EA Games credit card, but I'm like, can I just, like, not get the stake and get that money? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you just scrape that gold off and I'll just, <laughs> I'll just take the video. Yeah, yeah ignorant it was. Like, I was fucking broke as a joke yeah. overseas and then went out and, like, this, Jesus Christ. I'm like, between the probably eight people that were there it would have been like a three grand dinner yeah that's crazy isn't it or more. Could have just like, it was so your... ignorant yeah so ignorant and it's like it's okay boys it's on ea games yeah swipe the card fucking hell <laughs> that's crazy i'm like i'm like oh 15 bucks for dinner <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um... unbelievable Man. so ignorant but um no he won he's a really great yeah. dude and yeah um, he's bugged me about coming and joining the team and all that sort of stuff but it costs too much yeah it's heaps of money man like imagine if you had to move your family over there anyway like on uh, that side like... of it's simple and all that it's the so the way that works is chelsea pays for his drive essentially it's a rented drive um and chelsea uses his sponsors which then pay for the drive uh, so yeah. like chelsea like pays for his drive essentially um and it's hard like it's it's hard with drifting you know what i mean like you've got guys like chelsea who from all intensive purposes from the outside looking in you think he's a pro driver but like the dude's hustling and selling cars on the side because he can't afford to pay his rent yeah because he gets enough money from his sponsors to pay for the drive and pay for all the fd stuff but then because he has so many sponsor commitments he can't have a real job yeah then he's got no other money to make so he's like struggling to pay rent and that's why if you follow chelsea you'll always see him putting cars up for sale yeah, all the time he, yeah. well he's always down in texas because he goes down to texas buys cars without rust and takes them back up and sells them for good money back up north where he lives with all the cars are full of rust man so that's... he goes down there buys like a, a truck and a trailer and a and a few bmws in texas and then he'll pack it all up and drive it back up to where he lives and then sell it for really good money because everything up there is full of rust. rust yeah. Like, yeah. I wouldn't even have known that. I would have thought, oh, yeah, he lives, like, pretty decent. You know, he's got this pro drift team, you know, sponsored by... Nah. He's still got a side hustle. So that's yeah. why, you know, when you see these dudes, like, cranking out, like, houses worth of money on cars and stuff and chasing the dream, like... Yeah. It's only, like... Well, I was six dudes there, like that are doing the dream thing. Like the rest are like hustling yeah. hard, you know. Yeah. Or rich, rich families. Rich <laughs> families is more common than investors anything. and stuff. Yeah. No, just rich, just rich families that have got money to waste. I guess. Yeah. You know, it's all relative. You know what I mean? If you're a freaking multi-millionaire, a couple hundred grand a year per <laughs> season is not too bad. Yeah. Um, um, you know, to have a play, you know, um. But otherwise, you stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, like yeah, you see some of the other drifters like they own their own workshops and obviously build other drift cars and other race cars and stuff as well. So everyone seems to. Have well, they're on the hustle. Yeah, they're always on the hustle. Like you've got um, look at another one, Chris Fosberg. You know what I mean? Like that dude, he works hard. Yeah, he's got his own shop and works and does shit flat out. Like again, from the outside looking in, you're like. A dude's like probably just chilling out, fucking yeah, you'd drinking think. mojitos, and then going and drifting and whatever. But no, he hustles. You know, what I mean, he's constantly working. Um, a lot of them, man, like work. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I, I wouldn't even. You wouldn't think that they would have to like have a full side hustle with every, like all the you know pros. But obviously, they do. It's cool to have that. Yeah, inside. absolutely. Yeah. In in a yeah. way, it's it's kind of cool because it's like relatable you know yeah like i know it's not it's not the greatest situation to be in but it's it it's, it's like, relatable because it's just what you're doing on a different level 
yeah. you know what I mean? Like precisely, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's relatable because like, yeah, you're working your butt off and you're broke just to go drifting. They're doing <laughs> the same thing, but they're just drifting on yeah. TV. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Higher expenses and whatnot. Mm. Oh, insane expenses when you're talking FD yeah. level because yeah. even yeah. as stupid as it is, like their entry prices are crazy. Oh, super mm. crazy. Like they should not be getting charged entry. Yeah. Like it's such a joke that they're charged entry, <laughs> but it makes sense. Um, you know, even the entry prices alone are crazy. And then, you know, per round, you know, we, you're not going there with a cut two mates no. and driving no, FD, no, you know, you need a team. Yeah. Um, I think I was talking to Adam and even doing pro two, he was like every round, every round's like 10, 15 grand. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. US. Um, just to enter. There's a good video. No, just... like to, to drive at. Yeah. To drive. Yeah. And mind you, like he's getting tires for free. He's getting fuel yeah. for free. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, but you still got to get a rig there. Yeah. All yeah. that, you know, the, the workers and whatnot and, uh, Josh yeah, it's, Josh it's Robinson cheap. has an awesome breakdown on that actually. He uh he did a good a video. Good on... breakdown, but he threw a lot of people under the bus. Yeah. Like man, like just some of the things he said in that are really, really wrong. Oh, like really? to towards the people that helped him a lot. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> That's another really story surprised. altogether. Yeah, it is. I don't think we want to get into that. That's no, you don't know. No. Um, I just thought <laughs> no, I don't want to get into that, but that uh, yeah. there's quite a few people that have yeah. like, fuck that guy. Damn. Uh, yeah, it's really? crazy. Okay. But like, it's definitely some of you know, a lot of it was accurate, but yeah. a lot of it was a bit out of left field sort of thing. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's been over like an hour. Uh, how much how, do you have to go? Or anything you have to do? I'm all do, good at the moment. You're all good at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm scheduling my video right now for 8 p.m. Oh, no so worries. as long as as long as we're done by yeah, 8 sure. p.m. Yeah, um, we're golden. Well, we'll keep doing a little bit and then go soon. So if you have any questions in chat, ask away and uh, we'll go through them as well while we're talking. Yeah, um, I'm kind of good at going off on a tangent. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> That's what I like. I love a good segue. <laughs> um, I got a question for you. What is your favorite track around the whole world? Mine. Yep. <laughs> um, Besides your own. I would I'm trying to think. Some tracks that I really loved. Um all right, hold on. We got a we got something serious happening here. <laughs> Austin wants to show you his car. Ah, uh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> oh yeah. Damn. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. The transporter. <laughs> Love a, good, love a good Hot Wheels. All right, I'll show them that one. There's that one as well. It's a Hot Wheels thing. Oh, that's <laughs> hockey. <laughs> Fat wheel. It's from a house, he said. Ah. Um, what are we talking about? Favorite track? Shit. Um, There's a lot, man. There's a layout we do at Nürburgring on the F1 circuit at Nürburgring, which is sick. Um, it uses like the Schumacher S's, so it's like a top of fourth gear uphill initiate for the Schumacher S's and then it comes into a super tight hairpin so you come out of the S's and you can literally just back it in every lap um, and then come around a tight hairpin and then it's like a super steep uphill that goes into like a left hander and then a right and then it goes downhill quite steeply into this big right hander it's like super huh. epic little course it's probably one of the more fun courses I've driven just because like it's mid course backings like you pretty Dude, much like what the people that's that can drive like you're just backing it in every lap because it's just like it's the most perfect <laughs> back you set up that's cool that's so interesting cool. to watch do i backies yeah yeah that's sick they can just go wrong or you know in so many ways or they can just be done really awesome yeah yeah like or there's just... so many people that think that they're doing backies that aren't even fucking close <laughs> they're just <laughs> drifting <laughs> Or well, they might like over rotate. They pretty much stop and then do a clutch and then go. And go. It's yeah. like, oh, fucking Becky. It's like, no, you just fucked up, buddy. Um, <laughs> oh god. Um, I, I, you know, being that I have like the YouTube now and obviously DCA and all that, it's like I used to be quite vocal on the internet and 
now I try and be a bit more diplomatic. So now when I see that <laughs> stuff, I'm just like, okay, you, you be you. Cool dude. <laughs> yeah. It's probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I, I still let it go every now and then. It's just the truth, yeah? Like, yeah. Yeah. Don't claim it if you're not doing it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, True. I had a few few questions come through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone says, Kyle says, what's your favorite car in Adam LZ's garage? Hmm. That's a lot of cars. <laughs> There's like 45 <laughs> cars. <laughs> it's a serious collection. Yeah. Um, Barra Mustang. <laughs> nah. Oh, fuck. I helped a bunch with that thing. Yeah. Got him hooked up with a bunch of stuff here. He was like, do you reckon I should put a barrier in it? I was like, yeah. <laughs> Fucking... And then I hooked him up with um, the boys up here and all that. Yeah. So. Always. Even then I had to help him out with some stuff with the ECU and I had him connecting up with some guys here to help do that. So that 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 has a spot for me because I definitely <laughs> I had quite a part in making <laughs> yeah. that fucking thing happen. Yeah, that's cool as, hey. Um, but no, probably the Porsche. Yeah. True. That is yep. a nice car. <laughs> I was not interested in Porsches at all. And uh, when I was in Abu Dhabi, one of I've got a student over there that I teach. I do like a uh, person like online um, training with him and stuff. And then I've gone over there a bunch of times and taught him. And the red left-hand drive S14 I have here in Australia is actually his car. Oh, okay. Um, yeah like that we built here for him yeah um he has a pretty sick porsche and then we went and we he hired a ferrari 458 italia and then there was a i've driven lambos and stuff before but man porsches are fucking sick cars yeah, yeah like right. hands down much rather the porsche over the lambo or the fucking wow. ferrari Damn. like they're such a good car like genuinely and I actually drifted the GT3 RS, an older model than the one Adam's got in Italy. There was a <laughs> dude that owned a credit card company called Stella Credit, and his drift car was a GT3 RS, like black and orange what? GT3 RS. Like, this was in 2010. Yeah. So it was yeah. like, no, 2011. So it was like the latest model at the time. But yeah, Hydro in a fucking nearly brand new GT3 RS. Yeah, and, that doesn't. <laughs> definitely fucking they're sick cars like i was never thought i'd be like into porsches you know what i mean but they're really good cars yeah because all the drift car side of it you know what i mean like i've got a decent fleet of like drift cars so the, the drift car thing i find like less built cars more fun you know yeah like, more like grassroots the, sort of the, all the big dick swinging cars aren't as fun as like the shitty cars like if i was to pick you know a day of drifting in one of adam's cars i would take the 350 because yeah, it's more sure. fun. that thing looks fun and he you always know? sends it in that yeah you can yeah. tell he has fun in it well you said the thing is too like <laughs> that thing's not like that thing's actually pretty sick like yeah. it's obviously wise fab but the thing makes like 400 wheels yeah like it's, it's so good they act like it's underpowered or whatever but that's actually like a gangster 350 v yeah like the thing rips yeah it's got nitrous doesn't it um yeah nitrous yeah. as well <laughs> it's I just think, like, i don't oh, think we had the nos i don't think we didn't have the nos on when we were driving it because yeah. tiana drove it as well yeah so that's yeah. nice some other questions there um someone says uh, best engine for drifting, I suppose, in your opinion? Probably SR. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. They're getting so expensive now, though. The thing is, like, and when I say SR, it's like basic, yeah? Basic, Don't, yeah. Just T28. Yeah. Or, you know, something small, like G25, like the new G25 550, make like. 350 to 400 horsepower at the wheels yeah don't go overboard like nice reliable sr don't uh, put rocker stoppers in no. don't put an aftermarket ecu like always in this tune and just have fun exactly what i have 185 yeah. kilowatts fucking s14 gt went uh, t28 in his june done 
you know? Yeah. Um, did Actually, did you see uh, Garrett filed for bankruptcy today or something? I don't know if that yeah, was... Yeah, was... I read into it a little bit. It seems like it's got a lot more to do with Honeywell. Ah. Which is by going through a bunch of legal bullshit at the moment for okay. a bunch of asbestos stuff. Right. So I think it's more a case of, like, the company folding. But they... I don't think Garrett's going anywhere. Like, I think Garrett will still be Garrett. And I'll still... Yeah, yeah well... When I read into going. it, it was... When I read into it, it was more for, like company reorganization or something yeah that's all those big companies do they just go bankrupt get bankrupt. rid of those like lawsuits and then like re-emerge yeah 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 because yeah, I, I don't see garrett going anywhere I don't, like that's what i thought surely. like surely they can't just especially be... yeah. with the amount of cars these days that are coming out like f1's since f1's been turbo again yeah we're seeing so many you know new production cars that are coming out turbo and the new turbo technology blah blah like every, every fucking full drives turbo yeah you know all these yeah. new cars the 400z the supra all your bmws you know yep. xr6s everything it's all turbo everything's yeah. fucking turbo. All, so like they mostly use it. garrett yeah exactly so exactly that's what i was thinking today i just saw like a glimpse of it and i was like what like <laughs> yeah yeah i think it's that it just like he was saying more of a restructure yeah it's no more yeah than anything yeah. Okay, that's cool. Um, Leprechaun Laboratory says, "Boo, SR bad." <laughs> <laughs> People that can't tune him say things like that. Yeah, true. <laughs> does, does he Lep Labs? Do you know how to niche tune? <laughs> oh god, that's funny. Because niche tune is king with SR. Tunes the way, yeah. That's cheap. Yeah, it's it. cheap. Um, someone said, "What's the best budget drift car?" An AU. Three fifty. Three fifty. A three fifty. I've got my my AU is good and everything, but the fucking it's a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. It fucking breaks down all the fucking time. Like, I'm Man. on my fucking. I'm gonna be on my third auto. I need to put the third auto in it. Um, I need to put another cross member in it. Like, it fucking breaks all the time. Things shit. <laughs> It actually uh, drives pretty good. Like, the AU house lock kit and stuff, like, think fucking, like, handles good. Yeah, it looks and the awesome. Thing, like, when it works, it's fun as fuck, but it's also shit and breaks down all the time. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, then you got the 350, on the other hand, insanely reliable, and it's actually stronger. Like, you can hit shit with it, even when it comes to like bashing into someone. Like the Falcon is already like bananaed <laughs> from a couple of small hits, but those same hits in the 350Z, like, yeah, put a dint it's in my door and that's stronger. it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I can still open and close doors fine. Like, it it doesn't affect like the actual car inside with the AUs. Not that strong. Not as strong as you'd think. Yeah. Okay. You'd think they are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a bit delicate. Like, if you sort of hit your front wheel on something on lock you'll snap the, the steering rack off the cross member and then you have to replace the whole fucking cross member. Yeah. Ah, so that's, that's what shit. I'm having to do at the moment. You know, yeah, I just sucks. caught someone on lock. They spun in front of me and I just like dunk as yeah, I stopped snaps. and I hit them and I like pulled the wheel back a little bit, which broke the rack off. And it's like, it's a fucking cross member out job. Yeah, that sucks. Like, um, that side um, of it's shit. You, you got so your I would say 350. You got your 350 for cheap, didn't you? Because every time yeah, I look for them, hey, they're always like ten grand, like eight. But even grand. at ten grand, they're fucking cheap. Try and buy an S13 right now. Yeah, yeah true. <laughs> you know what I mean? These these fucking cheap. Yeah, and it's you can drift it straight out the box. You don't have to go and tune it or do anything. You can just. Oh no! Like you get a well for starters, it's hard enough to find a stock Sylvia. But if you do, you're buying it for fucking fifteen and yeah. spending another ten on it before yeah. it's even half a good car. Yeah. You know, like you get a 350Z, you shim the diff and fucking go. Yeah. Put a hydro in it because the standard handbrake's on the other side of the car and you dislocate your shoulder trying to pull <laughs> <You're> it. Like, uh. <laughs> yeah. It's like over there and you have to like do this to pull it <laughs> and you end up really sore in your shoulder. Um, but other than that, like 350s, man, you really can't argue with them and you can hit shit. Like the same, like I had to revert back to using factory wheels because I was just exploding wheels all the time. 
Yeah. Because I go a bit wide, and because they don't really have a back end, I don't have uh, overhang. So it's sort of the first thing you hit is your it's wheel. Your back wheel, yeah. So you blow a wheel to smithereens, <laughs> and all the suspension's fine. It's just your wheels blowing. Where up. now I've got a factory wheel on the car, I bang into the wall just as hard, and I just bounce off like. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. You didn't spend much money on it. Yeah. Meanwhile, you do that same thing in an S13 and you're like, oh, fucking, I've bent the rear rail. I need <laughs> new LCA, knuckle, fucking. Yeah, it's just factual. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. is there much um, difference between the 350 and the 370? At this stage, yes. Um, mostly based on the thing that really makes the 350 feel really good is like GK Techs, like LCAs and upper arms and coupled with their knuckle makes it feel like an S chassis. Yeah, they've yeah. done a lot like of... It feels that. like a really... It feels like an S chassis with heaps more grip in the rear. Yeah. Um, and especially mine being lighter, you know, it, it's really, really nimble and, you know, for a stock DE, BQ, like, things fast. Mm. Yeah. Um, Damn. Damn. I'm not to buy one. So... Here, yeah, it's it's fast and reliable, and um, the only thing right now the the three seventy is she's a big girl. Like she's not a big girl from a point of view, but it's heavy versus my three fifty. Like ah, my three okay. fifty is like if I load the three fifty like not straight on the trailer, I just grab the back wheel and drag it across. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> yeah, I'm a decent sized dude, but even still, you know what I mean, like. If it's not straight, I'll just fucking drag it straight. Just do it, yeah. Um, the 370, I definitely still feel the weight in it, but it is a complete car. Like, I've still got sub in it and fucking yeah. I've still got AC, all of that stuff. Like, it's it's still essentially a factory car with shim diff, coilovers, and a handbrake. Yeah. And I do have extra lock, but, you know, I think as soon as Greg gets done with the LCAs that he's got coming... Yeah. Dude, once they come out, once they come out, it'll be three seventy is gonna be sick. Whole new ball game. And yeah. I found the sports button. That True, you better. did. That guy told yeah. you about the sports button. That's awesome, yeah, man. That's a legit thirty fucking horsepower at the wheel. I know. What How the- crazy is that? I always just thought sports buttons were just like yeah, gay ball on downshift yeah, or yeah. crackle a crackle tune or something. <laughs> I don't know. The sports mode doesn't do anything. Thirty horsepower, Hell. man. Dude, and the, guy, and the guy's like 25, 30 horsepower all day long on the dyno. I was like, what the f-? What? And sure enough, we hit the button, and I'm like in spots where I was barely getting to the top of fourth. I'm like halfway through that corner going, well, we're fifth now. Fucking, yeah. I was like, it, it so was cool. noticeable. Yeah. So, yeah, it was sick. And it, and it, I hadn't even realized, because a friend of mine has a 370, or had a 370Z that was drifting my track, and the thing like chalked. And then we had someone else come and there, there's chalked as well. I was like, mine doesn't go that hard. And I'm like, oh, maybe because the engine I put in mine is out of a, a G37, they might be a little bit different oh, tune yeah. or something, like not that it had a different cam or a bit less horsepower or whatever. Nah, man. Fucking Just sports, sports button. button. <laughs> I didn't press the fucking sports button. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so we buried the sports button because we just we put the handbrake through the hazard hole. Oh, and true. we just moved the hazard button across to go where the sports button was. <laughs> so it's you like, had to get into it. Sports button. Yeah. Fuck that off. Put that under there. Put the hazard button in. Cool. We've got hazard still. Got a handbrake. But now need you need the sports button. You need the sports button. <laughs> that when you're at the track and someone just points something out to you, and yeah, it's yeah. like, what? Dude, it was it's actually good. sick. Like heaps older dude, um, quite well off, like very wealthy dude. He has like GT cars and everything, but. Him and a few of the boy have these boys do these endurance races with the 370, and we were just like feeding information off each other, and it was actually like super helpful both ways. And it's the the grip stuff's been pretty fun for me because obviously totally new, so it's been a totally new aspect where I'm just trying to like absorb it all. It's pretty funny. Eh? I did my first one um, at that night event at QR. Dude, yeah, it's way more terrifying than any other car stuff I've ever done. <laughs> like. Oh, really? Well, it wouldn't help at night at QR because yeah, you can't see like, there at the best of times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but like drifting so so much more safer, I reckon. Because if you're circuit racing and you come off, you're going so fast. And Sun- Sunday Arvo, come for a ride in the 350. Yeah. <laughs> well, this Sunday. 
at um, Matsuri when um, when there's oh, not a lot of people on the track and I can get a proper run up. Huh. Yeah, I'll be keen. I'll come up if so I was over. doing. <laughs> I was doing 187 <laughs> entries into corner three what in the, the convertible. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty nuts <laughs> yeah and that was before i'd made it lighter and stuff so i should be able to go faster than that now if, oh, if they'll let me get the run up yeah yeah and yeah. we're doing two i was doing two 203 or 202 i think it was into corner one in my s13 yeah. that was only on shitty tires though so i couldn't go any like i was literally wheel spinning the whole straight <laughs> i just couldn't go any faster um you definitely go fast drifting yeah <laughs> yeah like i've, I've been passing too me. fast that circuit shit. when when you're in a convertible and you get thrown sideways at 200 it, your helmet tries to rip your head off how did yeah. you not have a roll like cage your helmet now, literally because the air the air gets under your helmet and literally just goes true um yeah so what how do you not have a roll cage until like now like what shibby like shibby you look shibby 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 Oh, convertible uh, though, like. On, you know what though? So this is what I was saying about the 350 before and how strong they are. Like I would happily roll a convertible 350Z versus being in a rollover in an S13. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. 100%. All right. All day well, long. Well, it's just like, like so. I say my 350, for instance, I can stand on the windscreen pillar. You know, and I'm 120 kilos. I can stand on that and like, and yeah. it doesn't move. Yeah. An S13. You imagine if 120 kilos I went and stood on the fucking roof of an S13. <laughs> You'd be bending that shit's everything. folding yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they're just on a different level. You know what I mean? The car's <laughs> 25 years newer or 20 years newer. You know, that's just yeah. It's just what happens. Strength safer. Are, yeah. And yeah. It, obviously it's convertible, so it's pretty designed to be able to. I like. I like it. I was at an event at Port Macquarie and I got T-boned by a fucking FD who there was a 34 in front of me and he, he sort of didn't think he was going to spin and last second he spun and I stopped in time and the FD had actually got back on throttle and he was still on full throttle when he drove into the side of my 350 and like the FD got fucked up. It was like sad. <laughs> it was an SR3, SR FD. Oh, damn. Car. Uh, the front of it sick. got minced. And I got to the start line and I was like, dunk, door open straight up, perfect. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Because he smashed straight in my A-pillar. So straight door and front quarter, like just boof into there. I get out, I'm like, pull my front quarter out a little bit, take my door trim off. <laughs> She'll be bang, right. <laughs> bang my door out a little bit and fucking away I went. It was like yeah. nothing fucking happened. That's and crazy. you guys will see not tonight's vlog of mine, but tomorrow night's vlog when the sort of finished 350Z goes up and you see how minted, well, you already know how minted, you guys know yeah, how minted do. it is already. <laughs> but it's like, when people see it, they're going to be like, yeah, there's so gonna... many people that have seen it the last, like last night because we had an event. So many people saw it and were like, that's the, the same, same car. car? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's it the looks same good, fucking man. car. It looks real good from what you've shown. Yeah. Like... <laughs> The mad car? It is a mad car. <laughs> hey, um, I'm pretty hungry, so, <laughs> and it's almost time for your uh your premiere. So I think we'll end it there. Um, definitely need to get back on because you got a lot of stories to to tell. You got a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm the old man. Hey, it's... Um, I've done some stuff, I guess. I've been around a little bit. Yeah. Me. Um, yeah. One day, I want to get Adam LZ on and have you on. I reckon it would just be the best thing ever. I just don't know how hard it is to get him on. I feel like it would be a mission. Oh, a pain in the ass. Yeah. Complete pain in the ass. Hard man to get a hold of. <laughs> um, yeah, he's not too bad. But he is absolutely fucking gagging to get back in Australia, guys. So yeah. He will definitely be back here, and I think obviously by the time he can travel again, yeah. everybody else will be able to travel again, and uh, yeah. we might be able to make get Adam being part of the uh, Archie 100. Yeah, yes. That's sick. Oh, that I'm so out. keen for that, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely going to happen. Um, thank you oh, to yeah. all the live viewers for uh, coming and chatting and hanging out and watching the live stream. Uh, if you're a pleb and you didn't watch this live then uh, just remember to hit the like button. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. 
and uh, all the links to these guys' channels in the description as well. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys, and uh, we'll see you all in the next uh, episode. All right, man. Sweet. Peace.